What up everybody, it's your boy JK, and uh, obviously here today you're here for the second edition of the Strong and the Mighty. If you've not seen the first edition, there should either be a link over here, here or here, or the link will be in the description. Anyway, on to today, here is the part where we talk about the extracurricular supplement. CRI, a national drug support charity, have recently stated that steroid use has gone up by sixfold. To find out why, I went to go and speak to them. I mean, the increase in steroids, we see seven people a week. Um, and that's just at our clinic. Then we see sort of another fifth. There are seven new people, people that haven't presented at services before. Then we see another consider to another fifteen on top of that, just in our clinic on a Wednesday night, and we're open five days a week. So, you know, it's immense and it's exploded over the last couple, of, sort of two or three years. Okay. So, what do you think um, made the steroid increase? I think there's a lot of factors in there. I think um, certainly people risk of jobs and things like that certainly in the construction um, world is a lot of the people that, that are working on building sites they want to be bigger they want to be able to work for longer um, mm. and be more efficient when they're working mm. um, and so they've gone down that route of using steroids to sort of enhance themselves also speeding up recovery for some of them as well if they hurt anything they find that using the steroids quite often gets them able to carry on working so they don't have to have periods of time off mm. um, but I think I think the main thing, in my opinion, is if you go on social media, you see everywhere there, uh, you know, we used to talk about um, not having sort of size zero um, models on, on billboards and things like that. We're doing the same thing, but with men now. So yeah. it's all right to advertise Coca-Cola with a man without his top on, mm. um, but people are going to want to look like that. Um, and I think now more and more as we're exposed to it more and more through social media, Twitter, Facebook, uh, prime examples, um, we're seeing that body image and men want to go for that now, men care more about what they look like yeah. um, and I think as well you know we've lost a lot of the old industry that we used to have working in factories and things like that and so there's a macho aspect to it as well. But is that true? Is it just all about body image? Again it's um, for me I don't think I'll ever stop because I'll never be good enough it, Why do you feel like that? Because I'm not up with my size. I'm adamant that when people see me walking down the street, they laugh at me. They laugh at my size. Hmm. And it, it just makes me feel inadequate to my life, basically. It's hmm. a complete psychological effect it's got on me. Hmm. And it, it's got a pretty bad old. Because also, when it, when it starts like that, it causes depression, anxiety. And so how have steroids helped you? It's actually... It, well, I've built up, I'm at a size that's, that's better, my mm. depression's nowhere near as bad, you know, but I've still got that, it's always in the back of my head, they're mm. always laughing at me going down the street, no matter what I'm doing to talk about you. Um, the reason that I take to use the steroids is the fact of my age of 32, where I want to be, um, competing at high level. Um, I haven't got the time, like if I started 16 years ago, to do it the same way as the natural lads, where, you know, use food and things like that. Um, so yeah, I suppose it's a, it's a quicker way of doing it. Also, you know, being honest, probably 95% of the lads that I'm going to com be competing against are on them as well. So... Is that to try and make it like a level playing field or...? Yeah, I mean, in the day, you, you, you know, regardless of what anyone says, you're always going to be a less advantage, you know, disadvantaged if you're not using when somebody else is. Yeah. Uh, so, could you tell me, when did you start training? I started training properly uh, about 16, 17 months ago. Okay, so how have your gains been? Um, at the start, because I was doing it naturally, it was slow. Um, Just give them an average of like, what you're benching or lifting. I first started benching. My first bench uh, was 110 kilos um, when I started. I trained, I trained before, yeah. but not at a high level. Um, then when I started training um, with the lads that I train with now, um, yeah, you know, it was a, it was a 110 and it was a struggle. Um, kind of creeping up, 112, 114, um, got to about 125. Um, then started the first course, went up to a 150, 160 bench. How long did that take roughly? Three, four weeks. How did it make you feel? Yeah, it makes you feel good. You know, when you when you see that kind of increase going to your bench. Um, I then decided after I'd done it that I kind of I was gonna go back 
back to the root of natural because um, I wanted to do the natural comps but they're not it's not enforced enough you know you, there's lads that have done done comps that obviously I'm not going to mention names but they're not natural lads you know and then they're they're, they're going into the natural comps because they're saying they are it's, it's unfair um, so I thought well you know instead of doing that I'll go back on go back on and start training hard and do the you know the proper open comps so um, so I came off dropped down to about a 140 bench so I lost you know probably 15 20 kilos um, went back on and I'm at a hundred about 180 kilo bench now and that's taking you 16 months yeah so that's one person who uses steroids to boost their self-esteem and another for function so which one is more prevalent I'd say I probably see more for vanity um, and that is a lot down to the younger group, age group, the sort of 18 to 25 year olds who are, is said are at more at risk um, f with using steroids, from using steroids and Why is not that? using. Um, I think a lot of it is down to the people that they're talking to are generally a lot older, so the side effects for somebody over 25 are going to be a lot different for somebody under 25 mm. due to the way your testosterone production works and it sort of cuts off after uh, around 25. Mm. Um, under 25, you're still building your test natural testosterone levels up. Adding a synthetic testosterone, which is what a lot of steroids are, to that mm -hmm. can hamper your, your production of testosterone so you're not producing as much but then it can have a permanent effect as you're as, as that's developing and you're growing it can hamper that and it can cut that right down so people are stuck with a lower testosterone level so at the moment that might be fine while they're 21 22 and not bothering too much hmm. but then when they're sort of getting into the 30s and they want to have children that's when it starts to become a problem and people don't look in the long term like that um you know some of the research i've done as well they say, you know, you shouldn't take them until maybe the time that you actually took them. So maybe if you started training when I did, which was around like 19 properly, when I started taking it seriously, do you think you would have taken steroids? No. Um, if I would have started, if I would have started when when I was that young, um, I would have I would have gone as far as I could naturally. Um, and then if I got to a point where I thought, no, you know, that's it, I can't get any further. I wanted to, 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 to be at that high level of competition, then yeah, we might have been, you know, 10, 10 years into it, thought, right, okay, I'll start them now. Um, would I recommend anyone going on them at 19 years old? No, hell no. Why is that? Your body's not, your body's not, it's not where it needs to be, you know. It's, it's, you speak to these lads, oh, I want to get big. Do it naturally, you know. Start, do the groundwork get five years under your belt get as much as you can and then if you still want to do it fine do it um, but no I would never I would never recommend to anyone to go on to something um, whatever you do in your in your life is your choice don't do it because someone else told you to do it you know make, make sure it's done for, for the reasons that you want it to be okay so it's better to take steroids when you're a bit older but does that make it safe um, I wouldn't say it's safer, it's not safe for anybody to take steroids, it isn't actually about the steroid, it's about the practice that goes with it, so it's about um, the fact that the steroid can be counterfeit, that's about the only issue with the steroid. The majority of the other harms come from injecting, so um, you know, um, not getting it into a muscle uh, mm. and that causing an abscess to develop or the oil not dissipating into the system quickly enough which can lead to abscesses as well but also the risk of sharing needles so from hepatitis C, HIV and what we found, the new NICE guidance that came out um, earlier this month um, the figures in that say that sort of 1.5% of people um, that use steroids are infected with HIV and what we've noticed is that's really close to the level that we've got in, he um, in uh, heroin and crack users as well mm. so that's quite a concern as well now yeah, but is that just because uh, people are not injecting properly, or? It's no, no, not at all. It's about the sharing. It's about people not having the right education or speaking yeah. to the right people. Okay, so what what kind of service is it that you offer to help maybe prevent this? We like to try and educate people about what they're going to be using. Mm -hmm. We like to talk to people about the diet and the training regimes. 
What we found is that a lot of the younger people are coming in and they're using testosterone or any steroid and they're thinking that they'll just get big from injecting a steroid and that isn't the case. You have to have a good diet in place which is stick to seven days a week mm -hmm. um, and you also have to not be drinking very much, not using other substances. Um, there are a lot of factors that weigh into it and so we approach it from every angle and look at all the different things that they've tried. Quite often when somebody, a new presentation comes in that's, you know, I get a 22 year old come in and I'll talk to him first of all about his Diet, what's his diet like? How much yeah. is he eating in a day? And what you find quite often is they say, "Well, I'd, you know, I have a couple of meals, and I maybe have a kebab later on." Or, and that isn't what we want. You yeah. know, that isn't going to get you bigger. That's going to just it, you're going to put weight on, and that's about yeah. it. Steroids aren't a miracle cure for, for being skinny. Um, and so what we talk about with people in that situation would be, right, let's have a look at your diet. Let's see if we can get you on a diet that you'd have to use if you were using a steroid. And let's do that diet for the period you use a steroid over. So if somebody yeah. was going to do six weeks or 12 week cycle, then we'd get them to do it for six or 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, when they come back after the six or 12 weeks, quite often I get people coming back saying, I just can't take enough food on board. Mm -hmm. And that says a lot about how their cycle is going to be. If they can't take the food on board when they're not using the steroid, yeah. a lot of people are going to struggle to do that when they yeah, are yeah. Um, and you know I've got guys that are older in the 30s that they set their alarm for four o'clock in the morning so they can wake up and have a protein shake or mm. eat a couple of chicken breasts or something mixed with some rice just yeah. so they're getting everything that the body needs so yeah. you've got to be really devoted and and we try and educate and reduce the harm of people that are using it, it isn't about telling people not to use it mm. it's about helping people use more safely so you know the people who are struggling to get the calories in do you tell them or do you advise them maybe to try and eat properly first rather than going onto the steroids? That's always our approach. We always advise try the diet first. Once you've got the diet in place, then get the training in place as well. Once you've got a good training routine, you know, going to, to the gym a couple of times a day or trying to get it at the same time so people aren't going to forget it or decide, oh, I can't be bothered today. Yeah. You know, getting those things in place are the vital things. And getting people to try it without using the steroid, quite often people come back six seven weeks later and they say I've already got the gains that I wanted so I didn't actually need to use a steroid to do it I just needed to change my diet yeah so okay so um, hypothetically I'm a 20 year old I came in I said Dave um, I want to go on on steroids uh, what would you say to me like how would you uh, like, what would you say to me now the first thing I'd ask is what steroids you were planning on using okay so um, if I said uh, trend and sus I'd be saying looking at the fact that you're doing two steroids as a first cycle is a bit of a problem I would say cut it down and only use one but first of all have you got a diet in place have you got training in place which gym are you going to and how often are you training okay so I train five times a week on a five by five routine I eat roughly four to five times a day uh, getting in about just over 3,000 calories a day um, eat fairly clean uh, low amounts of cheese mainly like chicken that kind of thing that's what then I'd be looking at why? What was the reason that you were wanting to use a steroid? Um, if, you know, if you turn around and said, well, I want to get bigger, quite often what i found with the guys that are coming in and saying that, they're already quite big, they're already bigger than me and they think mm. that they're smaller. So I'd, I'd go along that route and I'd have a look at the sort of uh, your body image. Um, mm. And we, the way we try and deal with it, we try and deal with it as coming at it from a point of view of, right, you know what you want to do, mm -hmm. What can we do around that to make it, when you do do it, that you do it safely? So when somebody comes in presenting like that, then we'll always assume that they are going to use that steroid no matter what. Okay. So then we'll work around building them up so that when they do use it, they use it in the best and safest way possible to get mm. the, you know, the, the gains that they want, but in short space of time as possible, and then keep those gains rather than going yeah. back onto another side. So um, do you advise on like maybe dosage? Because I think some people have a problem with that. Yeah. We, this is, this is where our hands are tied because we're not clinically trained and a lot of these substances aren't tested and we don't know where they've come from. We're not allowed to give advice on dose or anything like that. We can, however, when people come and say, I'm looking at doing this amount, we mm -hmm. can say, that seems a bit, you know, that, excessive, that, yeah. that's quite excessive for your age or yeah. um, for the gains that you want or with the diet that you've got in place and we'll look at it from that point of view. So that's what's on offer. But how do users feel about the service? It's been a fantastic place. They've informed me about everything that I didn't know to start with. Mm -hmm. And I've had some massive uh, ups. Such as? Well, I've um, safe injecting. Okay, so uh, what, I've, what, did, what happened? Well, the first time I injected, I'd not got any any information off nobody. Mm -hmm. So I took a, I guess a 21 gauge green needle, which is used to draw up liquid, mm -hmm. after bios, and stuck it straight in my quad. 
Okay. Which turned into a very large sterile abscess. Okay. Which were quite painful. Couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. Couldn't could hardly sit down, and it just it felt like somebody stabbed me in the leg. Mm. So, um, what what was your thought when that happened? I thought they were gonna have to amputate my leg. Mm. I didn't know what it was, and I just knew I needed to go to hospital. So, um, what made you want to go on steroids again after that happened? Again, it's um, for me. I don't think I'll ever stop because I'll never be good enough. Why would you feel like that? Because I'm not up with my size. I'm adamant that when people see me walking down the street, they laugh at me. Laugh, they laugh at my size. Hmm. And it, it just makes me feel inadequate to my life, basically. It's hmm. a complete psychological effect it's got on me. Hmm. And it, it's got a pretty bad old. Because also, when it, when it starts like that, it causes depression, anxiety. And so how have steroids helped you? It's actually... It, well, I've built up, I'm um, at a size that's, that's better, my mm. depression's nowhere near as bad, you know, but I've still got that, it's always in the back of my head, they're mm. always laughing at me going down the street, it's nowhere what I'm doing to talk about it. So what are the possible side effects? Very first thing is that I'd like to acknowledge the fact that steroids work like magic, they work really, really fast. You're going to get real strong, you get real big in a very short period of time. And I know because I've used it in the past. Um, the only one, if you inject, sometimes, sometimes you'll get, you know, the next morning, a bit of a headache, um, which I believe is to do with that. It might not be, but, uh, you know, it's very difficult. The thing is, you read up, you read up and there's all these side effects. What you, what, what you actually got or what is just a natural you know headache but when you're doing something it's like oh that must be down to, to such and such um, one thing you do get is a trench off now and then if you if you inject and you catch a catch a little artery or things like that and it gets into your blood and that's quite a quite a nasty thing to get yeah so it's like, it's like a coughing fit but it's like a like a metallic taste in your throat which you really struggle to get your breath it's, it's like it's basically like you're struggling to breathe so you know the first time that happened what was going through your head <laughs> um, uh, the first time that I did it I, well uh, the person that obviously I got it from he said to me look you know just be careful it can happen um, so I was aware of it when it happened I didn't realize how bad it would be it was quite a, quite a, quite a shock to the system so, you know, other side effects, I'm absolutely going to hate asking this question, but um, other ones that I've read upon are acne, you know, high blood pressure and testy shrinking. Is there any truth to that? Testy shrinking, honestly, I've not had a problem. Um, acne, the only, the only place that I've really got, well, it's not so much acne, but you get some spots, but where is where, um, where I wear my support belts, my two belts on my lower back. Um, but I got that before. Yeah, it's probably slightly worse now um, than what it was before. But I don't know whether that's because I'm bigger than what I was. You know, I've got more body heat, more sweat coming out of me. I'm not sure. Um, regarding uh, regarding that, though, no, I, I, I've always had spots on my back, things like that. You know, the other one on my chest. Uh, never really had it on my face, and I don't seem to have it. Um, so that, no, not really. In honesty. Okay, so the current laws in the UK are that steroids are completely legal to take but illegal to sell. So what do people make of it? So what I was going to say was, you know, like, if you can't buy them legally, if there's no, you know, um, easy means to take them, you know, like you have to go to certain lengths, does it make you worried when you purchase them that you're taking something that's bad maybe? Yeah, you've got to be careful. Um, I think that's one thing that I don't know. I think you know. It's I've I've got a lot of views on different things regarding that. Um, they probably would be better off being able to control it and make sure that it's clean. You know, people aren't getting stuff that they shouldn't be getting. Um, but there again, you know, I where I get mine from, he 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 tests his own stuff. You know, so I know what what I'm getting touch wood is, is half decent um, yeah you know there's there is lads that I've like, you hear the stories that you know they've, they've purchased they've purchased what they thought was steroids and it's like you know cooking oil 
things like that in it. So yeah, you've always got to be mindful of that. Um, but that's like anything, you know. If you're buying, if you're buying something that you shouldn't be, yeah. you don't always know what's in there. Okay, so um, what do you think should be changed, maybe, to try and make it easier for you to give advice? That's a really difficult one because I think I think the main problem that we have is that the steroids that people are using are counterfeit. You know, and you're looking at ninety percent of them aren't real. Yeah. And the biggest problems that we get come from that. And in not knowing what the steroid is or what's in the steroid, it's very difficult. Even if we can give dosage uh, yeah. advice, it's very difficult to give that without actually having the substance tested, knowing exactly what it is, how much of what you know the active ingredient, whether it be uh, testosterone or HGH or whatever is in there. Yeah. It'd be very difficult to actually, um, you know, be giving out doses. Um, what I found useful is that there are websites out there which um, have been funded by one of them, pub uh, funded by Public Health Wales, and they can give a little bit more information about how they can be used for people that are using them, you know, to get big and and, and mm. for the um, cosmetic gains. Yeah. So, um, do you, what are your views on them on the current law at the moment? Because they're currently obviously legal to take, but illegal to sell, which is probably why you get quite a lot of counterfeit. So do you think that maybe it should be controlled? Like, would it help your service? Well, this is the thing. If you control a drug, we know from, from everything else that we've seen that when you try and control a drug, that doesn't stop people taking it or stop people wanting to take it. And quite often what you do when you make a drug illegal is that people will turn out and go, why is it illegal? I want now. I want to try it. So you get yeah. you add that aspect to it. What I meant was, is, you know, like, if it was legal, but you just have to go to a place where they give you the proper one rather than you getting the counterfeit yeah. stuff. Because like I spoke to a strong man, he was just like, I'd prefer it if I could have regular testosterone checks, regular cholesterol tests. Yeah. You know, would that be better? I think I think if they were going to do it, I think if they were going to do it and make it so you could purchase steroids legally and everything, I think that would be the best way to do it. It would be a case of saying, you know, having somebody that you could go to see and that your um, cycle and everything is geared up mm -hmm. already and actually written specifically for the individual. That's obviously that's going to be better for the person because you're tailoring it to an individual person and you're looking at their needs and what they want from it. So that's always going to be a lot better a better system of doing it and mm. um, it's just the fact that our hands are tied so much with it at the moment. So that's all we have time for today is this is actually for my uni work but a more in-depth documentary will be released soon so please subscribe for more videos. Uh, take care guys.